Okay, we are live. Um, if there's any echo, somebody in the chat, please tell me so that way I don't look like a dumbass. Okay, so here is the, although I, I think we should be good because I've tested it um, a few times. Set that to public. Okay. So, yeah, if there's any echo, just let me know in the chat. Okay, so this was um, a head that I sculpted um, previously. But, uh, yeah, the echo on the live stream was screwing me up. But, um, so, this was a pulled out of the Loomis um, head and hands um, drawing the head and hands um, manual uh, this is from page 29 this is from page 21 if you would like to um, use this as reference this is in the description you can go into you can actually open it with Adobe Illustrator and just get all the reference for all the images like open it with Illustrator and then export it that way or you can um, print screen it and then bring it into Photoshop that works as well so this is the end result and how I get my uh, models how I had been sculpting um, a lot of my heads and so forth this year so we are going to so for starters we're going to go to Shift A, add mesh and a cube, Control 2, apply a subdivision. And what that does is it has a subdivision surface with uh, two subdivisions so that you get something like this. So you get a bit more geometry to work with as opposed to a pure square. So then. Um, just as preference and the shading, I like to work with matte caps. And I also turn off the grid floor and the X and Y axes because it can be a little bit distracting. And I hit control space in order to um, have it like this to get rid of the arrows. So now what we're going to do is going to sculpt mode, turn on dynamic topology, go to the snake hook and we want the front of the face to be something like that. And then we can add the little bit more geometry in the face. We can bring this back up. Okay. Just wanted to check in with the chat to make it sure it's not echoey. It's probably fine. I've tested it a few times, but in the last upload, it was just <laughs> there was just tons of echo. I wish somebody said something in the chat. Um. So let's see. See, I want, I'm going to try and make this as like a base mesh for a lot of the future sculpts, too. So it's just getting these basic forms that can get really time consuming. The way I've heard it described is it's like an, a, an egg, an egg shape here and an egg shape here. I mean, that's not really precise, but that's what you're going for is like two egg shapes. And 
And then we are going to pull out a buttload of this geometry for the neck. Pull that in quite a bit. And I have screencast keys enabled. So that way you can see what I'm doing as I'm going along. Yeah, the front, front looks good. It's the side that uh, can be tricky. I'm going to bring that down, bring that out. Yeah, you want to get, you might be like, you know, rushing into it and it's like, oh, I want to learn how to make a fucking eye and like all this other good stuff. And that's important, but this very basic geom uh, geometry, just the initial forms determine the entire um, mesh. Because it's just, it's, it's mostly the, like those kind of things that determine um, how good the model will look, the, the sculpt will actually look. We can go in like this, add in some geometry. Okay. Then go in here and then around halfway through Probably going to add in like an indication of the nose and then an indication of the ear and then I will save it as a base mesh. You know, see how the eyes are like halfway down? You definitely want to do that. I mean it's really, you know, like a lot of those kind of, if you like take it in art class in high school or something, I mean a lot of that comes into play here. I'm just going to add an indication of the nose. Just add an indication. Flatten that shit out.
Okay. Indication of the year time. I'm trying to have better proportion, uh, like an idea of the proportions last time. Get in there and flatten that bullshit. I don't want that angle. See, and it's just, when you're just starting out, the, uh, the mesh, it's just so much easier to do stuff like that. It's just so much easier to, like, bend, twist, and, you know, do very broad things with the form when it's very early on like this because later on when there's more detail it's just it's just harder to be uh well that's that's more of the precise stuff you know it, it's harder to go broad when you're in like precision mode let's get like a general f indication of the ear i don't know that could be a meme me just saying indication of things. An indication of the year, an indication of the chin, indication of what I had for breakfast this morning. So with ears, you just draw a bunch of geometry. And then you just go behind it. And then the, the bottom of the ear matches that, the top of the, the ear, the bottom of the ear matches the bottom of the nose, the top of the ear matches the top of the, I guess from here it looks like, the top of it looks like it matches like the, you know, the eyebrow region, not the eyelids, but the eyebrow. Doing pretty good. So I think I'm going to save this as a base mesh. So that way, like this part, just the general forms of the face can be uh, saved. Q03. Yep, there you go. Okay. Yeah, so it can just help, you know, because it's like it's a pretty broad, broad form. So you don't want to have to do that every time you start a sculpt. And there's there's basis messages online, but it's still good to kind of make your own, I guess, to some degree. So now we, I think we can. I usually do like the, the the eyebrows and then 
yeah, we can we can do like the chin. I mean the uh, the cheekbone, and those brow and that kind of stuff. And we can do the eyes later. The eyes is one of the last things that I do because um, it can be one of the most difficult. I mean, I think it is the most difficult on the face, so it can be kind of stressful. I remember, I mean, I just could not do eyes, like, just ages ago. I just could not even do them, but... Yeah, you know, sculpting in Blender can be uh, pretty tough. But, you know, once you're, get, once you're kind of getting started... But once you do it enough, you know, you kind of know where everything is, you get used to it. It's a big ass fucking nose. Use the pinch brush. I mean, I just use pinch to shrink things mostly. Like, if I want to crease, I'll go in with the crease brush. But pinching, I just use the freaking... It's like, you know what? I want this to be smaller. Go in there. Make that shit smaller. With pinch. You can do it in a pinch. See, see what I did there? It's me, it me trying to be clever. Okay. Okay, we have nose. The nose knows. Yeah, I mean... The Loomis book is pretty good. I mean, whenever I finish doing the exercises in Blender, like recreating them, I, I usually end up with something that's kind of Marvel comic-esque. Like it has the, like the very sharp kind of classic look to it. I want to see if I can tighten this up. I want this to be less round more tight yep see what I mean about how when there's more detail it's harder to move case in point Yeah, and I want some of these features to be kind of sharp. Go in there, those nostrils. I think I've seen it 
It's like a CG cookie tutorial. You can do it like that. And then flatten. Because we're just, we're just trying to get a feel for where things are. It doesn't have to perfectly look like... It doesn't really have to be perfect, but just kind of... a feel for where things are. So, I mean, stuff like this. Like, obviously... I mean, maybe... Unless you're going for like a robotic character or something. I mean, you know, you want an organic smooth surface. But I'm kind of going back and forth between these two. See how, you know, a little little change can be quite drastic. Like this. Hmm. Hmm. Like how that side view is looking. It can be, you know, it can, it can. I think the side view is pretty hard. Like it's just, it's just, it's very easy to get hung up on one area, and for things to become lopsided. that angular line thing going. Maybe I could do the chin. That's interesting. And um, if anybody has any changes or suggestions for the forms or any anatomy stuff like that, then please let me know. Okay. I think I'm gonna start going in here.
Okay. Yeah, we're starting to get some Skeletor motherfucking creature. Oh yeah, I mean, once you get the hang of sculpting in Blender, I mean, you can pretty much make anything. Let's see. You can make human characters. You can make a SpongeBob. You, you can make flying dildos. You could probably 3D print one, and then, you know, I mean, it's, it's you know, use your imagination. But yeah, it's great software. I love this software, man. I can't believe it's free. And, uh, you know, to anyone who's like, oh, well, why, aren't you, why didn't you switch to 2.8? I mean, uh, well, I'm basically a boomer with this software. I've been using it since, like, 2012. It's almost eight years. Basically eight years as of next month. It's a long fucking time. Um, so, it's like, it, it takes a lot to get used to, honestly. I mean, I'm sure 2.8 has a lot of good features, but it is drastically different. Is drastic, man. All right. But I do plan on learning it sometime in the future. But it's just very, it feels very weird and alien. It feels more like Cinema 4D, I'm going to be honest. Flatten there. It's kind of an interesting shape. I don't know. This is more starting to look like a skeleton. I'm, I'm very happy. I don't know. Maybe I should just make a fucking <laughs> skeleton ass shape. And then I think this goes to there. the chin next. Blade it here to get that butt chin. Yeah, get that fucking those chin butt cheeks. Those chin ass cheeks. <laughs> okay, this reminds me of the scene in Men in Black 2. <laughs> That's very uh <laughs> I'm just gonna say Will Smith kicks kicks this guy in the butt chin. But it yeah, it's uh, anyways. Okay, yeah, it's starting to look inappropriate. <laughs> Anyways, it's very, very distracting. Well, because I just I saw this little, these little, it was, it was very subtle, but yeah, it's not so subtle on mine. But 
I'm, I'm going to keep it. I can, I can always change it later. But yeah, I'm starting. To, I like how this one turned out better than my previous that I did in my previous live stream. Yeah, make that nice and drastic. I always make these. I forget what this is called, this specific shape, but I always make mine nice and drastic. Because you can always you can always go back and smooth it out or. Use another tool or whatever. Yeah, I think I just needed to get some practice. Because my other one, like halfway through, I was like, eh, I don't know. But, yeah, it's my goal to get like 20 of these at the end of the next month or two. And they should all be live streamed. Because why not? Well, because I fucking recorded all of them. I recorded all these. Like uh, like 30 of them. In uh, like March through June. June. And then my hard drive just freaking dies like that. It's just what happens. So if I live stream them... Uh, you know, they're more likely to stick around. I don't know. I just, I'm very sentimental like that. I like the, uh, the history of things. I mean, at one level, you can't cling to everything. I mean, everything is temporary, but, you know, at the same time, archives you know, archival stuff is just awesome. You know, just some of the things, like just some of the moments that have been captured in history. Just imagine not only being there, but recording it and having it. One, one little secret that uh, Kent Trammell taught me was if you use the pinch brush without dying topo it um it just shrinks the geometry but it it keeps because right now see it loses some of that detail all the details kept well it can get kind of odd especially i mean if you just poke it it's good Yeah, this guy's this guy's a very good looking man. He's a very good looking sculpt. If I may say so. He's got he's got a butt he's got beyond a butt chin. He's got a fucking ball chin. Alright, there I said it. He's got a fucking testicle chin. Dude, I gotta find some way to entertain myself until this is finished. All right, so what was it? It's a very angular face. How does that look? That looks like shite. That looks like f fucking crap. That that was was terrible. I mean, this was good, but that was. What would we do without Control Z? Like what? What, what would you even do?
I mean, this is pretty good. This is a de I, I like this. This is decent. Just go in like this. Okay. So I think we're gonna we're just gonna go with the hook and Y method, although this is kind of it's a little bit different, but I mean basically so right, like the outer shape of the ear is kind of the hook. And then there's the Y, which is the inner shape of the ear. Though that's this isn't really the best example of that, but Looks really good from the front, but the side. It's always the side. It's like there's that that meme of like Homer Simpson where he's like his skin is like tied to his back. It's like everything in front looks good, but then it's just you know, I mean even three D modelers have used that meme. It's like, oh just fucking fix it in post. But that's basically the sculpt rug form and it's like, oh, it looks good. And then, oh, you go to this side. You rotate it. You rotate it two degrees. It's like, oh, right. Okay. A, um, a high schooler who just saw a few YouTube tutorials made this. This is not industry standard. I had a potential client tell me that once. It's like, this, you're not industry standard. So that's the the meme. So that's what that's what yeah industry standard. You're not you're not industry standard, bro. I just I don't want I don't want any comments or art station links that are industry standard. This has to be industry standard. You you have to, you have to do the work of twenty people. You gotta be outstanding. You gotta be industry standard. I no longer look forward to working with you. Your work is an industry standard. All right. Let's see. So we got a fucking ear. Just, just add more geometry. Sometimes that'll work. Just add more geometry to it. Just make it more dense. Just subdivide it. Just add more subdivision layers. Can fucking ZBrush. I'm st I'm. I can't be the only one who's distracted by that chin. I can't be. It's just like let's. You know what? Let's even take it a, a step further. All right. All right, all right, let's go. All right, I, I, there's another another step that I, I could have taken after that, but um, you can you can use your imagination for that one. You can use your imagination, dude. I, I I have to. I have to be inappropriate for these, cause why not? I just have to be completely inappropriate and unprofessional. All right. Let me see. Oh. 
All right. Hmm. I guess I can add the eyes. And then the hair. And then I will be satisfied. But for now, this is a good thing to do is to shift D, duplicate, Alt G to move to the. You can hit right click. But just, you know, duplicate the sculpts as you're going along. So it's like. You know, it's, it's, um, you could have it with the chin or with the nose or with the ears and just keeping kind of duplicating these as you go along, because let's say you weren't satisfied with how the nose was, but I mean, it's, it's tolerable, but you want to go back. So then you could just go back. I mean, this is the base mesh, but you could just go back and redo what I just did and you could just create, I mean, I, I think it's good to do that to keep, I do that in after effects a lot with my, um, motion graphics and things. Um, but yeah, it's just good to keep track of things and like, you wanna make it optimal so that way you can make as many variations of things as possible. Pretty good. Some good fucking lips. Okay. So now the eyes. This one is always a pain in the ass because um, you want to get the size right. I think it's five eyes across. So you want to make it so that way there's, you want to be mindful of it, right? Because you see if it's like, it's like one, two, three, four, five. So you want it to be like that, like five eyes across. And make it match. I'm probably going to have to subtract. I'm going to mirror this bullshit. I know this looks really fucked up right now. Yeah, it's just like, oh yeah, let's have his eyes just fucking pop out like this fucking bullshit. This is fucking Yeah, you don't you don't want it to be like where like the eyes are like too far apart. See like even that, what I just did, I mean it's like it still looks like fucking weirdness. Yeah, this is just some fucking bug ass creature. These huge ass fucking eyes. It's like I have a fucking cue ball. Cue ball. That we call that we call this creature cue ball. I have cue ball eyes. But if we go in with draw. And I actually at this this point is when I will go in and add way more detail. Mm, maybe not. Maybe I'll... And then we can see if the size is like 
you know, that five. Or if we need to shrink this. Yeah, I need to shrink that crap. And the thing that's good about this is if you you have the base mesh thing, um, like I suggested earlier, you can have the eyes in the same spot and then when you're doing it on another base mesh later, you do not have to change the position. So you can just, you can sculpt on a new base mesh. You can sculpt on your base mesh, but it's, I think you get, right. You just, you duplicate the sphere so that way you're not, you're not guessing, playing this guessing game every time with the fucking, should I position the fucking eyelids here and blah, blah, blah. And, right. You just put it in the same place sculpt over them and then it, it takes a lot of the guesswork out Now we got to make these eyes a bit tighter and less droopy. Add in that um, like tear duct. I think that bottom looks pretty good. Well, I still have it at 12. Make that a bit smoother.
Yeah, he looks very irritated. I mean, he looks kind of serious in this, but... Here's what we're going to do. Go with the mask. Hmm. Maybe not quite so many pixels. Now this is more of a frowny look. Now would probably be a good time to whip out a podcast or some good old early 2000s, late 90s techno or whatever, whatever jams of your choice, you know, some, some good old, some good old death metal is pretty good for the root chakra. Got to get in there. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's more about kind of the process for how I sculpt these heads. And, you know, I hope that this inspires you to, you know, go out there and find something and just sculpt it. I mean, that's really the best to learn. I mean, tutorials can be good for the foundations and just getting started and like, uh, that kind of thing. But ultimately you learn the most, um, on the job, so to speak, or just, you're like, okay, this is my vision for a project and I'm going to make it and you know that's where a lot of the learning happens okay as opposed to because I know how it is it's like you know it's like you know that kind of confidence to mm, am I ready to do this on my own um, 
But you know, you can always go back to the tutorials later if something's not clear, if it's like something's confusing. But Pinch this to get it a bit tighter. Well, now we got some alien ass fucking eyes. Let's get a glow party going. Fuck it. Yeah, let's just make every part of the head just absolutely as, like, ridiculously dense as possible. I almost said another R word and I caught myself. Um, <clears throat> I love everybody. I love all sentient beings on this earth. And nobody is ever capable of doing anything wrong, ever. Okay, now that we got that bullshit public service announcement out of the way, um, now we can admire how sexy this goddamn fucking model is. From... From both sides. And... I'm gonna cut some motherfucking hair. Alright. Nope, not that. Nope, fuck that. No, nope, fuck you. Get, get, behave. Mesh, sphere. I swear, it's just, it's just, I, whatever. You know. Sometimes you just press the wrong things. Okay. So, what you do to get, I mean, I could just polygon model this. I mean, that probably would be the best thing to do. But since we're sculpting, um, you know, it's like, why the fuck not? Just make everything objectively harder for ourselves. Who gives a shit, right? So, since we're going to just make that things objectively harder for ourselves, um, you know, just go in there. And we're going to make our sexy marine invader dude alien thing uh, into an old lady. Let me see. I mean, I'm not, I don't have a lot of expectations for the hair on this one because I tried it on the last one and it did not look that great okay, so again just want to emphasize probably recommend polygon modeling if you want that poly look to it very tight shapes but we can use the flatten and we can use the crease Uh, yeah, look at that.
Okay, that's something. Duke Nukem. Let's get a fucking... Some kind of a haircut going. Okie dokie. Do I want this to be pointy? I think so. But yeah, if they're like flatten is good. Um, the crease brush is good. If you're trying to get like a hard surface, again, I recommend hard surface modeling. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, but. Hmm. But if you're trying to get something that's a hard surface, um, the flatten brush is good. Um, and so is the crease brush, so you can really emphasize that shit. Yeah, just fucking get in there and crease that fucking shit. Fucking emphasize the fuck out of it. And then, you know, eh. all pinch is good, too. Yeah, I would say this looks pretty... Wait, what was the hair that I had? Yeah, that's what I had for the first one. Lame. So that's some pretty good fucking hair. So, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with this one. Came out better than the first. Yeah, I get that rotation. I mean, I could, you know, fuck with the neck a little bit, but... I'm pretty much satisfied. So, that was today's um, tutorial. I plan on releasing 20 or so of these within the next month or two, give or take. You know, it's kind of my, my play on the whole um, Inktober thing. I mean, I'm not sure if that's still a thing this year. I remember, like, um, last year and the year before that, it was kind of big. But, um, yeah, so, you know, hashtag uh, Sculptober, Blendtober, you know, whatever the hell. Uh, but, yeah, I hope you found this to be useful. And, um, yeah, so, but I'm thinking of doing this. Um, this one will be up. It will be public. It will be freely available. Um, I'm thinking probably two more. Um, definitely the ones that are kind of like this, where it's just the fundamentals. But then when it gets more into creatures and a little bit more, um, advanced, then I will make the, the stream will be free, but it will be exclusive for, uh, patrons, um, after that, the link. Um, so, but you know, a way around that is, you know, you can, you can always hold on to the link. It will be unlisted. Just a little link for you. But it's also good to have, um, 
some content for the Patreon. I want to have a little bit of incentive for that as well to support Focus Shift. But yeah, overall, I'm pretty satisfied with how this came out. I think it came out kind of interesting. It's kind of like an alien marine looking thing. Um, so yeah, um, have a fantastic weekend. I know I'm looking forward to mine. Um, yeah, and be stay tuned with all the developments of Hogeshift Media.